Hello, I'm Paul Douglas. In this last video in my series on guitar soloing, I'm going to talk about a few miscellaneous things that didn't really fit elsewhere into the series, but I still think are important enough to, uh, to put into a video. Another little variation you can add into your solos is uh, staccato playing. If I play a very simple little phrase... <laughs> All the notes are quite joined together there, but I can vary that a bit by using a bit of staccato. So if you don't know what staccato means, instead of holding, uh, holding a note for its full length like that, you, you just cut the note off. Uh, it's a very short little note. So instead of... I could have something like... Again, uh, more joined together, staccato. So you get the idea, you can really cut the length of the note down to a tiny little bit, as opposed to... And it's another way to add in some variation to your playing in a guitar solo. Another technique you can use in uh, your soloing are double stops, uh, which effectively are, are chords, sort of two note chords. One particular type of double stop you can use is an octave, so... That's a great way of adding uh, a little bit of harmonic interest into your solo. So. Now I'm playing those octaves there by essentially playing a standard power chord, but then lifting off the middle note and using my finger to move it. So we have. So I have. thing I'd like to talk about is a few uh, practice ideas. Of course, practicing along to backing tracks uh, is a great idea. I've got the two that I made specifically for this, for this course, but there are loads and loads of them on YouTube. Uh, ones I've made, ones other people have made. There's far, far too many to choose from, so you're spoilt for choice. Quite often when I uh, want to practice improvising, um, or, or soloing in general, I'll just type backing track into the YouTube search engine and just pick one and uh, play over it. The other thing I want to mention as regards practicing is sometimes you can get stuck in a rut and get a bit stale. And one idea to try and dig yourself out of that hole is to give yourself an artificial limitation. So, for example, you could say, OK, I'm going to improvise over this backing track now, but I'm only going to use those four notes, I'm not allowed to play any other notes. And it really sort of forces you to focus and then think, okay, well, I've only got four notes to play with. I better do something to make these notes sound really interesting. Giving yourself a, a limitation like that, even though it sounds almost contradictory, it, limiting yourself will get me out of this rut. It, it can work. Now, I've mentioned the backing tracks that I've made for this series. Uh, there are two of them. I'll link them in the description below. One's designed for using the A minor pentatonic over. One is for using the standard A major scale. Feel free to use these to uh, practice your soloing and to improvise over. And if you want to use them uh, as a basis for your own videos where you show you uh, creating solos over them, please feel free to do that. Uh, that would be great. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you've watched the whole series, then thank you very, very much for sticking with uh, my waffling. Um, I really do appreciate it. Please subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out if you click that subscribe button down there. And you can click the bell uh, icon as well if you want to get notifications when I post a new video. If you haven't watched the whole series, then check some of the videos out. You, you might not want to watch every single one, but there may be uh, one or two in there that you think, oh yeah, I'd, I'd really like to improve that aspect of my playing. In this card up here, I've put a playlist 
that you can click on and that contains all the videos in this series. Once again, thanks very much for watching. I've been Paul Douglas. I will see you in the next video. Cheers.